Hey, and welcome to this installment of 52 Masters. In this episode, I get to spend some time with someone whom I've known since I was a teenager. I'm sure you'll recognize him. He's been featured on the cover of major martial arts magazines like Inside Kung Fu and Black Belt, and he's acted in many movies such as Blade, G.I. Joe Rise of the Cobra, and of course the iconic Big Trouble in Little China. Of course, I'm talking about the one and only Gerald Okamura. So that being said, let's get to training. I am 51 years old. I've been a practitioner of Okinawan Shodin Ryu Karate since I was seven. There were some who would call me a master. I assure you, I am not. I believe that the true expert is someone who still has a student's heart and a beginner's mind. This year, to celebrate turning 52, I'm setting out to learn from 52 other disciplines, each from its own master. Some things I've tried before, others, I'm a first day beginner, like anyone else. 52 weeks, 52 new skills. I'm William Christopher Ford, and this is 52 Masters. Uncle Gerald, what do you got for us today? Well, this is very unique. What does it do? What does it do? Is that the question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't know. <laughs> but let me tell you the story behind this piece of weapon tray. Okay. I created this when uh, I found out that I was going to interview for uh, John Carpenter on Big Trouble Little China. Mm -hmm. But it's a cylinder with a bullet nose attached to a chain uh, concealed in the cylinder. And the idea that I had was when you flick the bullet nose out. And as it traveled, eh, you know, the movie industry, you can show the bullet traveling through the air, mm -hmm. halfway to the to the target, you know, it sprouts. Mm. Wow, it sprouts legs. Yes. Okay, then as it goes, it spins, it spins, mm. and it attaches to the body. And with that, it, it kind of, with the claw hangs on, yeah. and then I bring the body back to me, and then I finish him off. Mm. Well, I introduced this. I, I talked to John Carpenter. He kind of had a, a smile, like, you know, okay, you know. Very cool. Uh, what was Carpenter like to work with? Uh, for me, uh, he was one of the guys, well, when I say guys, he's one of the directors, the big time directors mm. that calls me by my first name. Mm. Not many uh, projects uh, that I work on that the director knows who I am. Mm. Uh, John was one and Sam Peckinpah. Actually, mm. Sam Peckinpah was the first. So, yeah. Now, working with John, I mean, he gives you a lot of leeway. Mm. Uh, even the character, I mean, he comes up with the character. I mean, this is a kind of fantasy kind of deal, but yeah, yeah. Uh, all of a sudden there's an uh, oriental cowboy in there. <laughs> but if you know the story, the original script, they say that Big Trouble was supposed to be a Western. Yeah, you, yeah. you heard that, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, so, sir. you know, it's like, put a guy in there, at least one guy, yeah. give him some guns, and give him some bullets, and there's the character. It's interesting, that character is just so iconic. It's just, uh, you know, people recognize you for that particular character, and there have been, like, posters and stickers and, you know, uh, fan art, and even action figures created based on that on that character with the, with the six shooters. It, it with all the, the different things and the fan reaction and the support, mm -hmm. the character is still alive. Mm -hmm. 32 years and it's still alive. You're still recognized for that character. I'm very recognized, <laughs> okay. the, whole, uh, the role. Mm -hmm. uh, and just to give you kind of a, a side thing that's coming up on DesignerCon, mm. that's supposed to be later part of this year. Okay. Uh, I think it's... Uh, November 16th, 17th, and 18th at the LA, uh, Anaheim Convention Center. Uh, Mark Nagata, he has a display at the Japanese Museum right now mm. that's supposed to last until March of 2019. Okay. If you come down to uh, DesignerCon, uh, he is gonna premiere a figure that he came up with of me with my guns. 
so talking about the longevity of this character, I mean, uh, it's 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 there. It's there. Uh, it's alive, uh, and everything goes back. Mm. You know, we started out. How is it working with John Carpenter? Well, mm. my thing is, thank yeah. you, John Carpenter, for creating this character. Sure, sure. Uh, um, so, what more can I say? You know, the the man had this in his uh, his idea. Mm. You know, and this funny thing about six shooters with bullets about that long. I mean, come yeah. on. they were like uh, elephant bullets, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then you know, the the kind of joke around the whole deal is that. I was glad I didn't have to reload those six shooters with those bullets, <laughs> right? right. There's, there's no way I can get them in the gun. <laughs> right. So uh, yeah. it's a, it's a for me it was a fun shoot at, huh. even at that time, okay. not knowing how how long this uh, this uh, character would live on, mm. you know. So got it. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the hook swords. These is my hook sword. Okay. Uh, I came up with the idea a long time ago. And you know, you have different opinions on when you design a weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, if you observe the hook sword, it has parts on it that's similar to other weapons. Sure. So what I did was I started out with a blade with a handle. No hook, uh, no crescent, no dagger in the, on the backside. And if you remember or if you're familiar with the Chinese uh, tiger hook sword, the hook comes down and it's, uh, you have a radius on it. I chose not to do that on this, this design. Instead, I had the hook up in going in the opposite direction. Uh, and the whole idea was inside this area here, this radius here would be sharpened as a blade, mm. as well as the blade here. Mm. And then as I kind of looked around, I goes, okay, this is a long saw. This is a long attack, long range. So then I said, okay, what if I wanted it shorter? Then I have to kind of twirl it and I goes, you know. Okay, so it's like a sigh. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So now I'm, I'm borrowing the idea from the sigh. Got it. Okay, mm -hmm. so now I have the guard. Then I said, if I'm in this position, why not put a crescent? Mm -hmm. All right. Now we all know there's crescents mm -hmm. as weapons. Sure. So I just incorporated that into this weapon. Mm -hmm. And then I said, if I'm in this position and I wanted to attack you, the short side, mm -hmm. I would add a blade. Okay. So again, there it is, mm. and and the dexterity of it. Mm. So in my mind, uh, is it a weapon to kill? Is it a weapon to train the discipline of the weapon itself? You know. So it's a combination. Now, training to kill. I'm not sure how I'm going to conceal and carry this with me, <laughs> right? right? So, so <clears throat> what I'm getting, what I want to say is that I, I want the student uh, to learn the basic moves empty hand, and then you put the weapon in his hand. Okay. So if I'm doing a cross block, so if the punch comes in this direction, okay, the cross block <clears throat> without, without that would be something like that, right? And then I follow up. Well, my thing is that, okay, if he throws, I, I, can, I can still block it with a, with a cross block type of gesture, mm. but I can also cut. Right. All right. I can twirl. Now here comes the slice. Now from the slice, I can hook the oh, back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm right sorry. There. Yes. No, no worries. I'm, I'm good. sorry. There, I'm there's good. no blood. No, no, it's okay. There's no blood. I bleed on the inside. <laughs> there's no blood. So this is kind of like the uh, the idea behind the Okamura hook saw. Got it. Very clever. Um, and you thought about it, obviously, 
these things came about based on the need in combat. So like you just said, if this happens, I would need this. So therefore, another piece was added to make it almost a complete weapon. Yeah, I try to, in the sense that I want the person or the student using this or practicing with it uh, to learn the, the dexterity, the mm -hmm. variations, mm -hmm. but everything comes from empty hand fighting. Mm. Uh, so again, it's it's one of those. Uh, the other thing is, uh, yeah, I can go clang, 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 like two, two saw, two long blades going, <coughs> but the, the, the availability or the variety of the different parts of the weapon itself uh, gives it uh, a little bit more extra uh, mm -hmm. punch to it, I think. And then, naturally, as you you have a longer weapon, now you can twirl it. Mm. So now you get the long range. So it's almost like Kusari Gama, okay. where the, the horseman is on there. So now you have an extension of your, of your weapon. Mm. Uh, so the idea is, is derived from watching different weapons, applications of it. It's like we started out, is it a kill weapon for real? Or is it something that we're going to use it as a discipline? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I like to think it's more of the discipline side to give you the, the variation and the dexterity of it. Sure. So that's kind of my idea of the weapon. Well, Sensei. Yes, sir. Are you ready for the surprise? I'm ready, Uncle. The surprise of your life. The ultimate weapon. Look at it. Shine. <laughs> it's a kitchen name. No, it's not. Observe. Observe the shine, the sharpness of it. This is the superior, ultimate weapon of all times. Ninjas use it. Samurai. With this knife, you will not go hungry. Learn the technique, the usage of this superior ultimate weapon. Sensei, do you believe me? I believe you, Uncle. Oh. For me? You try. Mmm! Cucumber oh. roll. Right from the master, Joe Lukomura on 52 Masters. I want to go back to the days when you were teaching uh, Kung Fu Sun Tzu in East LA under Jimmy H. Wu. Uh, you used to teach, like, I think the Wednesday night classes, if I'm not mistaken. They called them the $40 classes. Uh, this wasn't at the uh, East LA studio. This was at really at, uh, in El Monte, uh, mm -hmm. Jimmy H. Wu's uh, studio. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, uh, it started out where I guess Jimmy had places to go on Wednesday uh, and uh, he just asked me to uh, run the class. And usually class involves a lesson. Uh, so it was uh, something that uh, I was really uh, excited about it in the sense that <clears throat> what I learned up until that in Kung Fu Sun Tzu is that the combinations are there, so the the variations of of, of uh, sequences can be altered, and this is what I try to present uh, as a Wednesday night um, lesson. And because it was something that Jimmy never taught, but picking up bits and pieces from other techniques, you know, that's how the forty dollar lesson came into you know, uh, for us. And that was kind of like, uh, 
everybody would say, yeah, you know, let's go to Wednesday night class for the forty dollar lesson. So yeah, there's some lessons that uh, other students picked up when they became uh, instructors and started to pre present them as part of the Sansu package. And you know, in that sense, I'm I'm really proud of that accomplishment. Yeah. Did you have any um, favorite combinations that you used to teach that you uh, that still stay with you today? Yes, uh, and like I said, there is some that uh, I didn't think was uh, difficult at all, but it seems like some of it, because of the, uh, the science and physics behind the technique, uh, some of it was never kind of passed on. Uh, and, and, and I, again, it, it's not a signature move, but it's something that, you know, I came up with. It works. Uh, so for me, uh, it's an accomplishment. I think the most I got out of the art and uh, Jimmy H. Wu was that you learn the basics and you can apply anything to it. And that, that's the concept I take now with, with weapons. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> I don't want to call it a Japanese weapon. I don't want to call it a Chinese weapon, a Korean weapon. Um, some of the, uh, the crescents, I, had a, I came up with just a crescent, a handle and a crescent. Well, that idea came from, say, uh, in old Okinawa, uh, the antlers of the horn of the deer, you know, they would cut it, they, they would use that as a weapon. You know, the sai, mm. uh, the tongfa. Okay. Uh, so there's, there's weapons from other countries that I find if I can fit it into a weapon, uh, you know, I, I try to do that. When I used to go for a photo shoot, when I was lucky enough to, to, to get that uh, assignment, uh, uh, I used to wear a cup, hakama pants, mm. uh, and then I would put like maybe a Chinese top that, uh, in fact, my wife made me the top, and that used to be part of my uniform with with just a pants, uh, and then um, I would be questioned about why a hakama pants with a Chinese color top, <clears throat> and this kind of goes back a ways. Uh, I was approached by a Japanese master uh, on a movie shoot. And he came up to me and he says, uh, you Japanese, but you take Chinese art. And I said to him, you eat hamburger? I said, American. <laughs> and then I started to think about that and I says, you know, I'm Japanese, okay, I'm proud of that but I take a Chinese art. I'm also proud of that. So I used to do that combination, uh, maybe just to satisfy the people that had a question mark mm -hmm. kind of deal, so mm -hmm. yeah. What did you enjoy uh, out of teaching your art, you know, uh, and when you got the chance to work with students, what was, what was enjoyable about that? Well, going back in, in the days of training with, with students, uh, I was partner with, with another black belt, uh, Tony Felice. Mm -hmm. uh, his primary job was a school teacher. Hmm. So what we started all, we all started out in Jim H. Wu was the basic 45. And, you know, school teachers have a routine and they're real good at it. So he would take care of the beginning people. Uh, I was told many times that I am too strict uh, for the younger students, uh, and they were afraid. Uh, so I would kind of let him do the basic 45s. I love working with the more advanced student mm. uh, in the sense that uh, we can kind of create you do a move, and I say, oh, I'll try it this way kind of deal. Mm. And to me, that was uh, very enjoyable for me. Mm. Uh, but again, uh, I stress the basic in, in anything. 
if you have a good basic foundation. No matter what you learn and how high you go, you're always stable. But if you don't have a base, mm. you know, the higher you go, the quicker you're going to topple. What do you think is your responsibility as a, um, you know, you, you are considered a master and, uh, you know, I believe you've been around long enough to des you know, truly deserve that title. And I think that, uh, you know, of course, you're also a celebrity. Is there a certain responsibility you feel, you know, um, as, as a master of martial arts and as a celebrity um, to your fans? Is, you know, what, what is that, you know, to you? Well, I think it's two different sides to that. You know, you mentioned the martial arts side, you mentioned the movie side. Mm -hmm. uh, the martial arts side, it seems like uh, I'm more than willing to share. Uh, it's just that uh, um, when I was training, there was always this competition between karate and kung fu. And you know, I, I never used to like that. Uh, so I, I have this little story, okay. If you have a mountain, you have a kung fu guy here and a karate guy here, each is gonna learn as much as they can as they progress up this mountain. One day they'll meet at the top. Both of them are masters. They can kick, they can punch. My thing is, Share the knowledge. So you might have maybe one thing, two things, three things that I don't have as a kung fu practitioner. You as a karate man might have something there. So again, I like to share if the person is willing to listen and share his to me. Too many, uh, to me, my opinion is that too many have this thing about theirs is the best. And to me, each of us have pluses and minuses, yin and yang, that controls everything. You know, when it's, um, <clears throat> I first approached you about doing, uh, you know, this episode of 52 Masters, um, you know, the premise being that um, I'm going out and I'm going to learn something new from you know, 52 different skills from 52 different experts. And, you know, the preconception I have is, oh, you know, uh, Uncle Gerald is going to actually sit with me and teach me some things. But um, what I learned in this episode was that the lessons are not always physical and that what you're trying to teach me is through the stories that you're telling me and through the philosophy and... Um, you know, the things about, you know, strengthening the mind, you know, these are the really, truly important lessons that I think are being perhaps lost today. So, you know, this was the lesson, but I didn't realize it until you sat me down and we started talking and then it's like, oh, this is, this is what you're trying to teach me today. So today wasn't necessarily, a, it wasn't a physical thing. It was um, a spiritual lesson, which is really what, uh, you know, we, we study this, I, you know, that that's the benefit of studying traditional martial arts. All right. Mm -hmm. Mahalo. Thank you. This is William Ford, 52 Masters, Jaudo Kumara, the one and only. Mm -hmm.